Hey there, what's up? Today I'm going to show you Astro. I recently recreated my own site in Astro to try it out. Uh, I had read all the hype about it and everything, so I wanted to try it out to see how good it is. So in this video I'm going to show you roughly how I built my site in Astro and also talk a little bit about different concepts in Astro and what it is and how you can build your own site with Astro. So let's get started. So let's start off here in the documentation for Astro, docs.astro.build. Um, I'm going to talk a little about multi-page application and single-page application. Because if you've been using, for example, React, that you probably know that I love and I do a lot of React stuff, you know, on this channel. A multi-page application is kind of like an old WordPress site or anything that you did in PHP and stuff like that, or as they say here, Probably somewhere they're going to mention some stuff like, uh, yeah, you know, traditional MP frameworks also include Ruby on Rails, Python, PHP, Laravel, WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, and static site builders like Eleventy or Yugo. To be honest, I haven't heard about this once. But okay, that's fine. So this is actually a multi-page application and not a single-page application. If you use React, it's going to be a single-page application. And that means that it's going to have app-like behavior. You're only on a single page and the routing to different pages is done by React. In this case, we're going to have a page and when the user clicks to go to another page, the server is going to kick off again and create a new page for us. So it's going to send the new, new page to the browser instead of have just a single page application. Um, and they tell you a lot about it here. I think it's actually quite well explained. So I highly recommend reading the documentation here. So what I did to try this out, I built my own web page here because I needed to update that one. So this is new page I did here and I have this uh, nice little day and night mode. And that's actually the only JavaScript that you need for this page. Everything else is just HTML and CSS. And that's also the thing when you reach for a library, for example, like React, if I did that for this page, that meant that I need to, to, to send the complete React library to the browser. And that can take some time. and we just fill it, up, fill it up with a lot of JavaScript that we don't need because React is JavaScript. In this case, as I'm gonna show you soon, I just have a little bit of plain JavaScript for this button here to change theme. So that's all the JavaScript there is for this one. I also have a mobile menu and that one is just CSS. So no JavaScript for that one. I'm gonna tweak this a little bit more in the future. I've just released my page here so to have something, so to say. So I'm gonna tweak it a little bit more and also optimize it a little bit more. So it's not quite finished, but it's there if you want to check it out at webenfart.com. Uh, so let's move inside of the code. Or first we can maybe see here, uh, getting started. You can uh, start a new Astro product by npm create Astro at latest, and then you can go from there, they will set it up for you. So that's the easiest way to start a product. And yet again, read the documentation here because this is not a fully tutorial where I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. I'm gonna show you some small steps that I did with my own homepage and show you the code. Uh, so let's move back to the code editor. Uh, maybe I can bump it up here. So this is the structure of an Astro project. You have a TS config, I'm using TypeScript as always. I think you should also. Then you have a post CSS config. I tried to install some plugins to, to do the auto prefixing and stuff. As they tell you in the documentation, you should just be able to do like this, this simple little stuff here. But uh, honestly, I didn't got it to work. So I have to check that one up to see if I did something wrong. So that's on my to-do list. Then you have a package.json. You can see that you have Astra as a dev dependency. And then I install the auto prefixer and CSS nano. Not much here, so that's pretty clean to be honest. Then you have a config file for Astro where you can do some stuff if you want to do some special config for your Astro project. They tell you about that in the documentation also. Uh, yeah, this is uh, shamefully host. Okay, that's uh, pretty cool. <laughs> All right. So it's pretty standard stuff so far. And then just as similar to, for example, Next.js, if you've been using that, you have a pages folder and there you can put your pages. So I have the index .astro. The Astro files are natively called .astro, but you can also bring in your own framework. For example, React, if you want to use that. They tell you about that also in the documentation. You essentially type in, uh, I think it is npm astro add react, and then it will set everything up for you to use React. 
But in this case, as I told you about in the introduction here, that it's not a great idea to bring in such a big library as React just to, to have a functionality to change the theme. So I didn't do that here. I created some JavaScript for that that I'm going to show you soon. And this is pretty cool here because you can see you can still create different components. It's just HTML and CSS, those Astro files. So you can create different components just as you do, for example, in React. And then I have my interface here, uh, two different types of them. I have the quote front matter and I have the card front matter. So I create these types for the different markdown files that I placed in a markdown folder where I have my different quotes and I have my cards here. So these are the ones that I bring into this index.astro file here. And Astro has a little function here that's called .glob. I don't know if it's for global or something, probably. And then I have my types here. It's a generic, so you can type it. And you can see that I go up a level into my markdown folder and I bring in the cards and then I bring in the quotes. And this will make sure that I have these markdown files here. And then I can simply just loop through them here in my content. So this is the home page. You can see here, I loop through the quotes with a map, just as you do in React and JSX. So it's pretty similar to JSX. Uh, and you can see there's nothing much here because I broke it out into different components. So that's pretty neat. It's easy to have different structures here. And that's what I love about this because it's actually kind of um, more old school with multi-page application because it was a hype to have single page applications for a while. You build it like a single page application. And it's uh, pretty similar to Next.js. So if you've been using that, it shouldn't take too long to feel fami familiar with this one. And then you can see here, you can actually use Markdown files here directly. And that's pretty cool also, because here I have my text for the different subpages. If I go back to the browser, you can see that I have different subpages here. Pretty small ones, pretty simple. But still, if we go back to the code, you can see that these are actually Markdown files. And I created a layout for this one. So it will use this layout to display those Markdown files. So I have a layouts folder and here I have the layout and I bring in a header and a footer and you can reach for this front matter variable here from astro.props and then you can use your front matter inside of this document. So if I scroll down here, yeah, I come out some stuff here. So I have the slot. The slot is where your main content will go. And also here I check if this front matter says that it's the main page, then I'm going to apply a class on this one. That's called main page because I have a little bit of different styling here. Uh, and also here you can see my little script that I actually found somewhere on the internet. I, I was too lazy to actually code it myself. So <laughs> I just modified it a bit. I don't remember where I found it. I am still going to modify it to, to make it a little bit um, less verbose to get this to work. But this is the script that handles um, the theme that I have for my homepage. Um, and that's the dark theme or the light theme. So I utilize the local storage here to store the theme when the user has preferred one of them. And then I change the class list here. Just plain old JavaScript, how to modify the DOM. So I remove the dark class and I add the dark class here, depending if the theme is light or yeah. So pretty standard stuff. So that's the layout. Uh, then we can take a look inside of the components folder. So if I look at the header here, uh, yeah, maybe nothing fancy here. Just some style here. You can see that you have these little three dashes here. It looks like the front matter in a markdown file. So here you can do your JavaScript stuff. And in this case, I import my menu component and I can use it down here in my header. Let's see the hero, for example, same stuff here. I import the stuff here. I create my interface for the props and then I destructure out the props inside of these three dashes here. And then it will know about the props here because I typed them. So it's pretty cool. Let's check the menu. Uh, nothing fun here, probably. We can check the mode button. Here I have some JavaScript to actually change the theme. Uh, and you can see that I also put the theme in the local storage here. So this script here and the one that I showed you before are the only JavaScript that is on this page. And you can see here also, I marked this with is colon inline. And this means that it will send it to the browser. 
If I don't do that, it will only be run on the server and it will not work in the client, in the browser. So the button won't work if I don't mark this as inline. I can actually remove it, save it, go back to the page. And you can see now the button doesn't work. It doesn't know about the handle toggle click. But if I add this again, it will send it to the browser and it will work. So this is a neat way for you to kind of decide what you want to send to the browser and what you want to run on the server. And the great thing with Astro is that you use JavaScript on the server also. So all this stuff can just be run on the server or you decide however much JavaScript you want to send to the client. So that's pretty neat. Well, I think that actually was a small introduction to Astro. I like it so far. I think I'm going to use it more and I'm definitely going to do some more stuff on my homepage and optimize it a little bit more. Uh, so I can just uh, uh, encourage you to try out Astro and see if you like it. Uh, and uh, also I can encourage you to subscribe to my channel, spread the word. I have a lot of stuff here now on my channel and a lot of React whole courses and stuff like that. You can spend a few hours here and learn about modern Fronan. So please subscribe and hit the notification bell. And um, yeah, see you in another one.